Hi everybody. Okay, I'm back to show you how to print on uh, print digital papers that are included in your kit. I know that some people were struggling with this, so I thought I would do a YouTube tutorial on how to do this. So the digital files that Christy provided me in advance, some of the pages, some of the digital papers were 12 by 12 as you see here, and then some were eight and a half by 11. I do believe that the digital papers that are will be offered to you to purchase will be 8.5 by 11, but just in case you do have some 12 by 12, I will also include this in the tutorial so that hopefully that'll help and you won't have any problems. So let's, I'm looking for the, these are gorgeous papers, look at these. So I'm looking for the paper with the bows right here. So you can double click the file that you want, the digital paper, or you can right click it and select open with and this will pull up the different options. I mean not all of these will work but possibly Illustrator, I know Photoshop you can open it in there so if you're comfortable with those um, you can use those uh, programs or you can click preview is a default for Mac so I will show you for that. So I'm going to click on preview and then it's going to open up the file here so you go to file and then print. I apologize for the background noise. Jets are flying. Okay, and um, here this I switch between an HP Office Jet Pro 8610 or a Canon. I know it says MG7700 series. The one that I actually use is a Canon MG7720, but um, it's the same process for both of them so hopefully your printer will also have this but you see this border around here I think this is the issue that a lot of people were struggling with it's very simple to fix if you go to paper size you go to US letter and then you want to select US letter borderless or borderless anything that says borderless should work there see and it's filling the page now you can just click print uh, now let me do the 12 by 12 because that is different. So let me close this one out and let's get a floral. I know that was a 12 by 12. Let's get this all oh, the plaid. Let's use this beautiful buffalo check floral. Okay, same thing if you, so this one I will double click. And because my default is preview, this is how it's going to pull up, which looks fine here. We'll go to print. And see how this for the page is not the paper is not formatted for an eight and a half by eleven. It's a very simple fix again. So let me show you with the Canon because the steps are the same for my HP. It's paper size. Um, we want it to be borderless. One more step and we're all set. You just hit fill entire paper. There, there's your borderless paper, and then you click print very simple. Now that's just using like a default software or some type of um, printing software for your computer. I am now going to show you how I use the silhouette to print because in the silhouette you have more options. So let's go ahead and get that bow. That's a good example one. So what I do is, it's really hard. No, it's not. Drag and drop it. That's it. That's what I do. It's, oops, I did not drag and drop it properly. There, drag, wait till it's loaded, and then release. Now the paper is, you do have to do a few more steps, but I think it's worth it because you'll be able to customize it and manipulate it a little bit more. So I am going to scale this down because this is my eight and a half by 11 work area. I'm going to scroll this or resize it. And when you resize anything, whether it's clip art or digital paper, you want to make sure you're pulling it from one of the four corners. And I will show you why. Let me zoom in. Okay, now if I were to try to resize this and say, I need to make this smaller here, do you see how it's warping the image? That's not how the image was intended. If you like this look, that's fine, but I like to keep the integrity of the image, so I will pull it from each of the corners. So your best friend is the undo button. It's my best friend. <laughs> so if you make a mistake, if you experiment, you try something, doesn't work, just hit the undo, and it will 
fix it. Okay, so let's go back to resizing this onto the paper. It doesn't need to be perfect, but I would try to get it to as near perfect. And maybe some runoff off the page, actually. Okay, there we go. I'm going to zoom in so you can see. Okay, see that red line? That's actually the red line. And this gray line behind it, this gray line right here is the print line. So everything that you design needs to stay within the, if you're just printing, like paper, you need to stay within this gray area, but I'll show you a trick later. And if you're printing and cutting, it still needs to stay in within this gray area because this red line is your print, your cut line. So anything outside of here obviously is not going to print or cut, but anything in between these two, it'll print, it won't print, but it will cut. But how does it cut if it doesn't have something to print? But okay, it'll make more sense in the next step. So I'm going to go ahead and put the paper back. Okay, so after you have your paper laid out, the next step would be to go to File, and we want to change, set up the printer first. So pay, print page setup. And here, see how it says any printer? You need to actually format it, and you have to select your printer. Um, I will show you why. Any printer, it does not give us that extra option of US letter borderless or anything borderless. But if I select a printer, which let's go with my Canon, when you cl click US letter, scroll to the side, there's the borderless option. And then hit OK. So now, when I move this, the gray print line has been removed, but you still have the cut line, which means I, as long as everything is within this red box, it will print and it will cut. But because for digital paper, you're not going to cut, it won't matter how you lay it out. So that looks good. Okay, so now the next step would be go to File and Print. And now we had already set it for borderless. Now you can choose your quality type. So oh, I forgot to show that to you in the previous one, but it's the same thing um, if you're printing from the preview. So media quality, that's where you would find like the brochure matte paper. Um, that's what I use to print cardstock, die cuts. Um, I'd have to look at my actual settings, but it depends on what printer you have. So my suggestion would be to play around with different paper types, sticker paper, acetate, vellum, the Canon matte photo paper, and try to play around with all these different settings and determine which one you prefer or that meets your liking. Um, I believe, you know what, I know for sure when I'm printing paper on my, because I print paper on my Canon, the quality is just better for me. Quality and media, I would choose the matte photo paper and the print quality I choose as high and that's where these colors will be so vibrant on especially on the Canon matte photo paper that you can purchase from Amazon. So then you would just hit print. So it's really playing around and getting familiar with your printer, the print settings, the print quality. So if I were um, so let's cancel and get out of there. So now I want to show you why I choose to print in with the silhouette. So what I can do is, um, this means that the digital paper is not selected. This is your selection tool right here. It'll say select right there, the arrow. So I want to click on here, select. I'm going to go to this palette. It looks like a paint palette. And it is. it says open the fill panel. So I am going to, this is for solid colors, this is like a gradient, and this is where your patterns are. So if you hit the pattern, let me raise this up so you can see, um, and click advanced options, it will pull uh, a lot of other options. So one of my favorite features is the transparency. This is where I can change it to be lighter if I want to write on it or I want it clip art to stand out on it more. So You can also rotate this, but do you see how it's distorting? It's because it's not formatted for that. Like a 12 by 12 paper, you could probably rotate it okay, but 8.5 by 11, the dimensions are getting messed up. 
So you can also change the angle of the paper. Um, I usually like to keep it, well, let's put it back to zero. Scaling, now this one is cool too. You can make it bigger. However, when you do make the image smaller, it's how it's formatted, this will not work, but it will work for like a smaller, I mean, if this is because the paper is eight and a half by 11, but if you were making like a small box or something smaller like that, you could do that. So I usually keep the scaling at 100%. I keep it in its original form. And here's another feature, you can pan. So do you see if pan is not selected and I select the um, image or the paper? See this little circle with an, a plus sign in the middle? If I move that, you don't want to move this because that's actually like a centering tool or a centering, um, let's hit undo. So this is like, I don't know what the proper term is, but it's for centering. So I never mess with that because I like to use a centering um, feature, so I'll keep that there. But if you click on pan pattern at the bottom, do you see how that changed? Now we have a small white circle with that plus sign. That's that one. If you click on it and move it, you see how the image, and again, this will work for some papers or especially if you're using a smaller smaller image, I mean smaller like a box or a heart or a circle, but I wanted to show you where all those options are here. So I, oh, I need to show you the 12 by 12. Let's do the 12 by 12. So we can always throw this off to the side. Anything that you have that's not on this, on this white workspace or the print area, print and cut area, that will not print. I call this my print, uh, my work area and feel free to throw things on there for future use. Let's go back to here. Let's get that beautiful floral. Let's use this one. Now drag and drop it. Okay. Zoom out. This one. I mean, you could leave it this large, but I'm gonna try to make it smaller. And you know, by playing around, you may discover an easier way to do this or something that I don't know. I, again, I'm not an expert, but this is just how I use it and what works for me. So here's the 12 by 12 paper. Same thing, because this page was already set up borderless, I don't need to do it, but you do print page setup. And sometimes the silhouette will remember your last setting, sometimes it won't, but this is where you would find it again. And just again, make sure that you're formatting it for a printer borderless is good and you can also check to see if it has that gray line behind which it doesn't so let's you could again play around with the transparency this you can rotate it because it's a 12 by 12 image and you're not trying to um, it won't distort the image I can let's keep it right side up angle it see this will work angle it and I can scale it to make it a little bit smaller see how that works Although I can see the white lines like that. Let's take it back to 100. And you could only scale it maybe slightly because it is a 12 by 12. And then pan it to move your papers around. This will really help in the future tutorials that I will show you where you're maybe trying to fit an image into a box and you want flowers to be in the bottom corner or something like that or for it to be distributed um, evenly on your like um, square. That's the easiest way to explain it. So that's pretty much it for printing digital papers and I hope this was helpful.